Yeah, so leave, leave uh, England on April 22nd, uh, five weeks. Yeah. Um, so next five weeks now is a lot of time in London. Yeah. But the Altitude Centre there, which I've been training at, um, because they've got chambers there. It's where they, they've got 33 people in there doing every year. 33. 33 people. Um, so, so that's great because their chamber can take you up over 8,000 metres. <laughs> yeah. Which is obviously yeah. high uh, to help adapt so it's all about trying to help your body adapt to working at them heights um, just to, yeah. 20% of oxygen is in the air at sea level like we are now yeah. top of Everest is around 6% so for that you're trying to create more red blood cells in your body which helps your body adapt yeah. to that yeah. that height so do loads of work on that um, and then just maintaining the work and doing really fitness wise not trying to get injured now not doing anything sort of silly but also not losing the base that I've sort of built up yeah. from a physical aspect yeah. um, and then probably a bit of mental preparing as well you know I'm doing a little bit with a psychologist just almost informal just about you know how to deal with certain dangers and, and certain situations which could come up on the mountain and, and around people um, and it's been quite interesting for me because it's it's probably given me a greater appreciation of athletes. So when I think about the players in football I've worked with, and like actually the commitment they have to have to be an athlete, you know, and to just the stuff that people don't see, the boring, the yoga, the creative adventure stuff, the nutrition, the hydration, the stuff, you know, recovery. You know, because I've had to do this, not to the level of a, that's a footballer, but yeah. similar. Yeah. It's like, you know, when you go to the gym three times in a day, and people think, oh, that's probably great. It's like, it's bloody boring when you're in there alone. You know, if you're out running at half five in the morning in the dark alone, it's a boring, lonely place to be. So I think it's been really good from that point of view because I think my I, guess I always had huge respect for every athlete anyway but it's probably gone up another notch because as long as I've lived their world but plus it's enough Norwich so the last three four months yeah. and in terms of like we were just talking about before, before we started it, there's, there's the mental aspect of it all and I you know I asked you were you nervous or, or more excited and it's very much still an excitement factor for you you know yeah. you can't wait to get going can't wait to get going I think it's become real the last couple of weeks we just got close you know I it, think it, it's always been when are you going oh next April when are you going oh next April oh, right. oh brilliant I'll see you before then great I think now it's when are you going five weeks six weeks four weeks whatever it's like oh yeah that's close mate isn't it you know and, and so I think it's sort of almost dawned as wow this is this is here you know what I mean this is this is, this is upon us um, so um, but yeah excited and, and I feel ready and just like I said so I just want to get out there now, get, get yeah. going really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it must be like people who are ready for marathons or whatever, so I just want to run it now. Yeah. You know, I feel ready to run it, so let's let's get out there and do it. Or have a go at doing it. And, uh, and obviously this year, or the last sort of period of time, you've been more UK based, but you, you, know, you've done, you must feel you've done all the preparation because you've been, you know, Mark Blanc, you were saying, you've been in South America. Yeah, I've, I've taken it very serious from the start. So when, when this... I've always wanted to climb Everest. During lockdown, when I looked into actually, is it how possible is it for a normal person like me? Because it should be like, you have to be superhuman to do it. And then I worked out you don't. Um, but I've tried to then do it to achieve the work and not cut corners. Because some people cut corners, like in everything in life, that's, that's all right, that's all right for them maybe. But I've tried to do this as much prep as I can to give myself the best chance to be an A successful, but most importantly, come back. Yeah. Alive for my family because yeah. um, that, that's also the important thing here. I've got a young family, um, but you know, hopefully, the next 40 50 years ahead of me as well in my own life. So it's like, yeah, I think that's been the key is that not cock any balls because it's been like, you know, if the guys at Altitude Center do you must do two hours every morning of that. And even when I was working, okay, I've had to get up at four o'clock and do that before work. Not a problem, I'll do it. I'm not cutting corners and I can't be asked alone do half an hour. No, I'm doing everything to a tee. I think that's all you can do. Uh, and that's always my mindset. If you want to do something, try and do it properly and give yourself the best chance. And that's, again, what we said before, it's control and what you can control. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, that, that's, that's the, at this stage, so close, it's kind of, as you said to me, you, know, you go for a run, you put your foot in a pothole, and uh, you know you're you basically wrecked. Yeah. So it's those factors that are not under your control. That's probably where the nervousness is that now yeah. at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. I'm probably starting to think about how far, how worried my family are about it. You know, my mum doesn't say a lot lesser, but she's um, you know she's scared, and I know she's scared because when I speak to her, I can tell. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I know I'm going to be leaving a wife alone with my son for three, four weeks. That's going to be hell for her um, because her husband's away. There's going to be limited contact. I'm in a dangerous place. Um, and then obviously my son, I'm lucky, I think, because he's still at the stage where he just thinks it's exciting as opposed to dangerous. Yeah. Which someone says to me you know, over the weekend, actually, how old is he? And I said, you know, I'm really glad he's only 28 in, in, in the summer. I said, because he's still excited. I think if he was two years older, I think he'd be able to Google, yeah. start watching videos, yeah. start reading about some of the horror stories which happen. Yeah. And I think then he'd be super scared. Yeah. Um, so it's just sort of, I worry about them being upset while I'm away. Because I think it's easier when you're doing the action because you're in control. You know, uh, must be like people in the army, right? When they're out, you know, their family are waiting to have they come back from a mission. It's probably easier if you're in the mission because you know that actually I'm all right and I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas they're sat there waiting for the message to go off, or yeah. they're dreading that phone call, which no parent, wife, son, whatever wants to receive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, them I feel that's where you know, if I ever start feeling upset, where it's thinking about how they're going to be for that three, four, for example. Um, I mean, is it a cliche? I mean, is this the biggest thing you've taken on in your personal or professional life? Do you think? Yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. Because it's, I think it's combination of it. I think it's, it's been really good for me in terms of when I think about work and what's next. Because all the things sort of overlap, you know. So it's you got a lot of communication ability when you're on a mountain. You know, you have, you have to be honest with how you feel. You can't you can't be up that at them heights and trying to kid anyone that I feel alright when you because you get self killed or other people deal with you. Um, You've got to show leadership in times of, you know, maybe one of your teammates is struggling and you've got to pick them up and come on, we can do this. Um, so, so many things which sort of overlap what's been my world for the last 20 years in terms of work. Um, but, yeah, for sure it's a biggest challenge because there's factors way out of my control. Um, and I suppose as well, it is life or death, whereas football has never been that. You know what I mean? It is all my time, Norwich, Huddersfield, Wolves, Liverpool. Before. No, I have a die. But we're close to dying. You know, it wasn't. Uh, if we lose a game, no one's not going to die. If we win a league, no one's going to die. You know, it was. You know, I've had a few heart attacks in the stadium and stuff like that. But again, that's not my control. But it's. Um, Whereas this is yeah, this is this is big. Yeah, and clearly wrapped around this is you know something that's very close to your heart, to your wife's heart is the summit foundation. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And while this is about you and maybe on a personal level in your challenge, ultimately there is raising awareness for that charity, which I think is coming up two years now since you officially launched it. Yeah. Um, how does that tie in with you know this challenge? Yeah. So when when I started this journey, my, my wife Zoe said to me, "If you're going to do this, you should probably get some good for it for other people." Yeah. You know, and because uh, I was a bit like, oh, "I'll just do it on the QT, get it done, no problem." I didn't want it to be a show. Um, you know, there's downsides of it for coming to show because you don't get beat up for it. But on the flip side, more importantly for that, is actually you can raise some money here, which can genuinely help people. You know, we saw with Georgia recently, the young tennis player. Um, you know, we could help her having a life changing experience by going to play abroad and being the first um, first tennis player to do that. Um, but for us also as well, like North has become our home. You know, it'll be our home. Whatever happens next. You know, this will always be. You know, we were super conscious of Sebastian and our son that you know, both neither Zoe and I really have got somewhere that we would call home um, because you know parents move and stuff, right? But we we're always like, actually, for him, we want to have somewhere where in 20 years we're like, no, come on, pull me back in Norfolk. That's our that's our home. Yeah. Um, so we care about the area. And we care about the people, and it's an, and it's been an amazing place for us to bring up the son um, to live. We're very passionate about it, and we and we think it's a place where so much good comes from it. You know, we've been lucky that we've lived in other parts of the UK where we realise actually our specialist places. So it's like actually a chance to give back to that, and give, but more importantly, give the next generation back. You know, and that's nothing against older people, absolutely not. But it's a bit like we've got to try and keep the young people going in this area. We can't let it slump into like see other parts of our country where. And I know there's patterns here, but there's drugs, crime, and disorder, domestic abuse, all this crap. It's like, can we do stuff where actually we've got a charity where we can actually help inspire young people and give them financial support in stuff that they're then trying to do? Um, and that's important for us, you know, and, and post Everest, we'll continue the charity on. We might end up joining in with another charity because, you know, my wife's time and if I 
over here back at work, my time will be limited then. Um, but the fact of the matter is we'll still be doing stuff where we want to raise it for this area and that, that was important for us because we didn't have another cause, yeah. you know, like you know, cancer research or something like that, you know, amazing charities and stuff like that. You know, fortunately at the minute there's nothing which super touches us for that. Um, so it's like, well, actually, let's do something for young people on our own doorstep. And is it also an also element of that is young people who maybe don't have the life chances and opportunities yeah. that, that maybe other children are more fortunate to have as well? You know, yeah, absolutely. As we know, you know, there's a lot of inequality around. And... Yeah, there's, there's there's still bed poverty in Norfolk where kids don't have beds to sleep in. You know, that's Norfolk, which I see as a part of the country compared to you know other places I've lived. Um, so. Yeah, which we all need to. Yeah. We've all got a community responsibility, and those of us who are in a position who have got a voice to try and keep, to try, to try and just, you know, we're only going to change the state of our country. The art game is a mess. If the next generation coming up, that we can inspire them to do more. Um, so, and like I say, it's, 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 it's the people who have got less um, that need more of a help. You know, like our son's very fortunate, he goes to top school, he has top opportunities within that school. So we're not doing it for him and people like him. We're doing it for the people who probably have more of an upbringing with me and my wife, where you have to scrap for everything and he didn't have these opportunities, uh, where it's like, actually, we've got to help them. Because, you know, if you look at, an interesting, I went, one of my, I've been loads of visits since I've been out of work, one of them was actually the Red Bull. And they were talking about employees, just before we went to, they were talking, talking about their data and all that sort of stuff. And they interestingly said, we used to just recruit from the top universities. They said, but now we start to recruit in lesser universities because we want to have these, these guys who actually really need it. Yeah. Not the ones who are maybe privileged. And I thought, yeah, that's right. You know, like, people, often our footballers come from the, you know, Johnny Rowe, who we might be saying it, Abu Kamara, these guys, Max, Jamal, all these, the yeah, Raheem back in the day, the areas they came from. So it has to work out for them because the alternative is potentially jail or something else. Um, so I think it's trying to have it where we can help people like this who then can then help themselves and then hopefully they can then inspire another generation. So I think that's the important thing for us. The vision is can we help Georgia tennis player? So in five years, she can return that favour to the next Georgia, and then that one can return it. And then, all you know, it, we start educating and helping ourselves out of this crisis that we're in as a country because uh, it's only going to come from private private opportunities if yeah. we just stick doing what we're doing then where we're going and it's our yeah you know, we've got an eight year old kid got a four year old it's like you've got to do something which makes us place a better place because at the minute I think it's a scary place to come into yeah. I worry about what my son is coming into when he's 16, 17 and what oh, we've got to try and do something to change it yeah. and we can only affect our little corner right and do a little bit to help but if that helps 10 people over the next five years that's well, 10 people more than before. You know, that, that's enough for us. We're not going to change the world. We're not pretending that we can. Yeah. You know, we're not preaching to people. That's definitely not what, what we're about. But yeah, if we can help a few people, brilliant. But as you said there, I mean, you, like you and your wife, you know, the time that you can you can give to it. So, I mean, how, how do you, how have you in these, these two years balanced the work-life charity element and moving forward, how trip how to use that? Mm. It's been hard, but... We've got great trustees at the charities, and not just Zoe and I. Yeah. Um, so they've been unbelievable. So we've got all the social media, website stuff. Lauren does that for us. He was top class, because as so you probably know, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, so it's about using good people around us. Um, and then really, sort of where I come in or where Zoe comes in, it's actually probably our contacts. And we can open doors and we can get to people. And, you know, we can be the face of certain things, you know, because, you know, it's more likely you'd want to do an interview with me than with a great trustee that you've never heard of. Um, so we know that. And that's where, you know, I'm doing so with Sky in April with about Everest. They're not going to do that with someone that, if I hadn't been my... Time and Norwich they have zero interest, Paddy. That's the truth. Yeah. So we've got to use that as an advantage uh, for the charity because it's for that that reason. Um, but it's tough, and I think going forward, I think, like I said before, we'll probably look at maybe merging with another charity where they've got the expertise to take it on. But then we can do continue to raise money uh, and raise awareness, but through someone who's got more expertise than us because we're not experts in this for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And on that front of raising money and to tie it back in with, with obviously what you've got coming ahead of you now, you know, you are looking 
to raise I think your target's 50,000 isn't it yeah 50 grand yeah so we're at 20 more or less um, you know we've got a few promises as well so we're, we're, we're probably in the mid 20s which is great yeah um, and I'm hoping during the journey if we can get up to 50 that'd be amazing because you know, that that can help a lot of people um, you know George who helped with two and a half thousand I think it was um, from the money we've already raised yeah, and, uh, from previous things and she um, you know, so you think if you can do 50 or 20 versions of, you know, of that you know uh, that's a lot of people you help with a lot of young people so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's our age, you know, if we can do more brilliant, if we do something less, that's okay as well, you know, every, everything's better. And we're just super grateful for the people who have supported it so far and continue to, whether that's financially, whether that's promoting it, whatever it is, you know, we're, we're never asked for, for anything, but it's well, like, um, if people can, great. If they can't, no problem. No. And in terms of, if people do, I mean, you know, listen to this, watch it, whatever, want to, uh, do something, I mean, basically just head to the website, all the details are there. Yeah, all the details are there. You know, when you you put it out, we can reach their social media, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. Super I, easy. I did, I did know. I actually was having a look last night, and you can see that the the people have already pledged, and there was an interesting one coming on straight away. The Norwich first team players. Yes, yeah. So I mean, that was amazing. So when I was leaving the club, obviously it's been well publicised since June. I think we announced it. Yeah. Um, but when it came to my last week. It was amazing because, um, I mean, the whole last couple of days was just blew me away, really. You know, the, I ran a Cardiff weekend. Yeah, so yeah. on the Friday, um, Neil Adams got all the players, all the staff together in the restaurant and they did a presentation to me and they showed a video. Um, I think one of the club chairs maybe online, actually. Oh, it's like a farewell video, whatever. Yeah. Um, said some really nice things. Um, amazing, but also that day, uh, Grant, this captain Grant Hanley, uh, came to see me. He said, oh, can you, well, he texted me the day before. Have you got a minute tomorrow? Yeah. Um, came to see me and said uh, a few nice words or whatever and said, listen, the lads have all got together um, to say thank you. We didn't want to, we didn't know what to do in terms of buying this or whatever, but raised for the charity, which is amazing. Thing, you know, it's like 13 grand, I think. There's a lot, of money, yeah. you know? um, so, uh, so yeah, so that was amazing. And obviously, the Cardiff game thing was brilliant as well. But um, did you plan that ended? So no, the, the I plan. mean, I, I mean, you had a meter stepping in. Like, yeah, I spoke to him the day before. Uh, <laughs> said, right, Adam, you'll probably come on late. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you just go away, that'd be perfect. You know. Yeah. Um, I like it. I mean, you know, he, 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 did, he delivered. Yeah. Um, no, that was nice. I, cause I always knew on that day was my last, obviously my last game, and I always knew I was going to take my son down to the dressing room. So I thought this might be the last chance to ever get to take him in that sort of environment, you know. Um, and then, obviously, with one, I've gone down to the tunnel area. Uh, he's David or something. Come here, come here, come here. Slash is just running around. He knows all the players anyway. He's just been around him since he was a toddler. You know, he'd come on on Sundays if I was him watching trainer, he'd just take him in with me. You know, um, you know, Tim Cool once joked the only reason he got a new contract was because he makes him fuss for my son, he's probably right. Um <laughs> so he repaid us Tim. Uh, but, um, so yeah, so that was just yeah, so I, I couldn't ask for a better set of uh, the respect for lads to start. Yeah, I mean it was must have been quite surreal all around that weekend, but with a bit of distance now, I'm really interested, you know that. And again, it's all relative because it's a job at the end of the day, but it was your life all consumer for six years. Was there a, you know, at some point in the weeks or days after, did you wake up and, you know, you kind of a bit disorientated almost because you, 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 your whole purpose isn't there anymore. You know, what you got up and went and did every day of your life yeah. for six years. You know, was there, don't want to cheapen it, but is there like a, almost a sense of sort of loss or mourning kind of thing around it? In no, I haven't had that, actually. No. Um, I thought I would, but I actually haven't. So I think, which is good. I think that tells me it was the right time. Um, I think having Everest has helped. Yeah. I think if I didn't have a purpose, I, I think that's where I'd be a problem. Yeah. That's why post Everest is super important that I get a job or another purpose yeah. because yeah. otherwise, like, what do I do? You know what I mean? Um, so, and I'm used to, like, say, you know, time at Wolves, in Liverpool, yeah. Wolves, Huddersfield, Norwich. For 20 years, it's been non stop work that's all I've done that's all I've known um, so then not have that was strange but I think I was on reflection I was that tired 
I'm, I've never slept as well. I think it was probably six weeks. Right, just slept and slept with a clear head. And waking up not having stuff on your phone was amazing. Um, so it's nice, but I think also what's been nice is I've left in such a positive way with the club that every time they win, I'm so happy. Okay, every time they lose, I'm unhappy, but it doesn't ruin my life anymore. Yeah. Uh, and the people around me, because you know, yeah. I'm not poor for two days yeah. at home. Um, but every time they win, I'm super happy. Whereas I know so many people in football, and probably other walks of life, and leave an organisation, yeah. and then they're actually super bitter. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so happy that that's that's not me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but I think it, it, I think my feelings are because of the timing was right. You know, I didn't feel shoved out the back door or I left in the front door. Yes. Um, Dean and Michael's comments in the media, very important for me and, and nice because I didn't know what they were going to say. I didn't, I didn't ask them what to write. They're old enough to they could have read what they want or not written anything. And I, and I would have res- expected or respected anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I think time's right. And I think having that time I think just refreshed me. It's given me a chance to look at things differently, really assess my work but in a space where I can do it where I'm alone and lock off. Oh, bloody hell, I've got five missed calls before return. I'm so going to think about this. Um, so that's been great. So I know when I do go back in at some yeah. point, and I will, um, I actually think I'll be a better version of that. Um, but I also look back on incredible pride at March of what we achieved. You know, you've been to the training ground recently. You were at the training ground on my first press conference. You know, to see that difference. That doesn't just happen. That's that's not a fluke, you know. Um, see the two promotions, yeah, they're amazing, win the league, and now having been part of building the third promotion team that's going to be in and around it, you know, it, it so shows that we could do it again. I think all three managers, you know, we sacked Dean Smith and got from the league. I'd still question that okay, Dean was all right at that period, but I'd still challenge anyone and say, he's not a manager. I'm not sure about that. And then obviously Daniel picked success up, says it all. Oh, I think even now with David, people were like, it's not too bad. Um, you know, you look at his success at Huddersfield in keeping them in the Premier League is like, wow, he obviously knows his way around how to manage, right? So, uh, so I mean, yeah, just super, super sort of proud. I know we did a lot right. Loads of things to improve. Of course there is. And I've always been honest on that. Um, but I'd say a lot more right than wrong. Well, that's an interesting point because going back to that Cardiff weekend, it's just popped into my head. I think you put, you penned that it's got an open letter, didn't you? I think the Friday night before the game. And that was very self-reflective, like while you've just been there, you know. And I think you talked about, you know, of course, you've made mistakes and you have regrets. And that. I mean, you, you've talked a few times here now about when you go back in. I mean, what would you do? To, or, or maybe rel- relative to your Norwich spell now, what would you do different? You think, or would you do anything different? Yeah, I'll definitely think. Um, I'd be probably very less open in the media, a lot less open in the media. So I think it eventually gives a stick to be beaten with. Not necessarily by you guys, but by supporters. Um, and, you know, Norwich, more than Huddersfield, Huddersfield are happy than any media, because Dean Hall were doing a lot of the owner. Um, it was very clear when it came to Norwich, ownership stuff, the owners don't talk. Um, it was, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the feeling I got very early was there'd been a communication breakdown with the club and lack of transparency for sports, etc. And, you know, as a board, he was agreed that uh, I was a new guy, maybe naive on my side. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah. That's good, thank you. That was lovely. Could I have a little laugh, thing? Yeah, cheers. So it was a bit like, well, I'll come and talk, I'll, I'll come in front of that. Um, you know, and I was always protecting board level coaches. We never had a chief exec while I was at the club. We didn't chairman in the area for a year, and then, and then the option he left for whatever reason he left for. So it was like, Get always became a bit like a spokesman, um, and I look back on that. That sometimes distracted from being able to do the job, um, but at the same time, my nature to protect people was like, if there's a shit storm, I'll find it up, I'll do it. And I look back and think, actually, the times other people should have spoken and protected, not protected, it's protected me from that. The one has not brought me into that um, because it became then just a figure where if someone was rubbish, blame me. And it's like, I don't agree on season ticket prices or who the shirt sponsor is or whatever, but you almost become that amount of people who say, do the same, oh, yeah, it's, it's sponsor or whatever. And I'm like, I don't even know what sponsor it is. Like, with regards, I, I can tell you what sponsor sounds like. Don't look at the roof, it sounds like a bitch. Um, so I look back and think, I've got to try and 
I might try, I will step back on that and go, no, no, that's not for me. Um, don't wrong, if I need to throw things up, I think I've proven I've got the credentials that I don't mind having that and put myself up to set for that. Um, but yeah, I think I, I got that wrong, if I'm honest. Um, I think then that took some of my focus away from what, what was really important within the job um, and just drained my energy for them things. And, and I come out of Norwich now, having been out of Norwich, knowing that, my God, I was that tired. I didn't realise at the time how tired I was running on absolute empty. Yeah. I only know that now because I know how I feel since to go, yeah. Jesus. I felt horrendous before. You know, and every day was a battle to get through because you were that sort of brain. Um, so I think that would be the, the main one. Yeah. Whilst I think I also think it's important because I am a football fan. And I also do hate interviews where you get fucked off from an answer. So. I also think when you lose it, you should be honest. But I think you owe it to you as a journalist. I think you owe it to, if you're going to do it, you may as well be honest with people so they know what you're doing as well. I do think that was a strength of mine, as much as it's probably ended up being a bit of a weakness. But I do think, at least I think when we spoke, people would go, oh, he's not just turning a line here. He's at least he's being honest with us. We know where we stand. You might not always like it. Often people didn't like it. But I didn't try and kid him. It was a bit like, that's how I feel. That's what I think it is. This is what we'll learn from it. Uh, and yeah, some people liked that, obviously some people didn't, but I think at least you knew, I think you probably always got away going, well, we know what was underlying, that he's been honest with us. You know, never once have I lied to you well, guys in public. And two, I never said to you, oh no, we're never going to sign a letter. And then 24 hours later, we sign it, and I make you look stupid. I've never done that. Because I don't think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, I actually think it's right to, 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 be, to be honest, but... Yeah, when I look back as well, you know, obviously some of my comments were stupid, um, but I regret them because it just caused me problems. Um, you know, and yeah. any, is there any sprints or swelling time? Um, I mean, the women's thing. When we when we talk about the women's team at Norwich, they never trained at Pommel until I go involved with Flo. They never had sports side support, physios, but all the things came because. I signed off to go, yes, we can do it, we need to do more. Um, we can't turn the women's team professional yet in my time there because the costs, etc. Et we haven't got the money to do that. But what can we do? Well, we can give them a better training facility. We can get games to Carroll Road. We can inspire the next generation to be able to come and have connection with the girls' team. So, you know, if you're a young girl, rather than just seeing on Hernandez being in the group, you can see what all the girls do. You know, so. I know when everyone else knows at football club, actually the doors he's opened for the women's team is off the charts compared to what they've had before. Yeah. Um, and that's why that doesn't that doesn't uh, doesn't worry me. Um, but again, it got me told because I was being honest. I haven't watched a women's game before. I'm, so, so, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I hear people lie all the time in the media and do the agenda about oh I love this, I love that and support that, support that. You know. Do you? Because if someone actually really poked them and said, go on then, name the England uh, women's team for 20 years. And I mean, some of these people on national radio stations, etc., would go, I thought it said, hold it, I thought you were a huge supporter of that. I bet you can name the England team from 1996 year olds, just 30 years ago. Um, and that's my, this, again, I always have to sit at the club. I can't, I struggle with people pushing political agendas just to look good in the media or just to it's the right thing to look like we're supporting it well no the right thing is to actually fully support it yeah. if you believe in it yeah. you know it's like Ukraine awesome. everyone awesome. wears a little band well you can believe that much in them give them money or go and help them go out and help them fight don't just wear a badge and then you go to bed that night and never think of it again I just struggle moving off that I mean you said there earlier about you know maybe you, maybe there were sticks that people would beat you with metaphorically and I were, give them the sticks up. Yeah, <laughs> that's my fault. Yeah, but slightly in a, not through anything that you maybe feel you did, but the recruitment one was always one towards the end anyway. You know, there was windows where it maybe didn't come off in terms of, and you've, to be fair, you have talked about, well, if you'd have had the funds available, you'd have gone and got Premier League grade players. I'm thinking of the window before you went back into the Premier League the second time around, summer of 21. But to counter that narrative now, right here, right now, you look at Sarah, you look at Science even, you look at Sergeant, Johnny Rose, a homegrown you've touched on. Johnny Rose, uh, Johnny Rose, uh, Angus. Angus Rose. Yeah, all those players, if they, they this coming summer window or subsequent windows were to move on, substantial figures because of what they're doing on the pitch now, 
and they're all players who were under you and your recruitment people. So, again, is that is that a lazy narrative that the, the, the recruitment in certain windows? I think I think it's an easy narrative. I think when I think you see it at every club, right? So, my and I for bad again. Um, Newcastle have an average season in people's eyes yeah. after doing a great season. Oh, okay, mum was rubbish. Was it? Or you know, because the other thing as well, when, when the players we signed with Norwich normally were undervalued players, young players who yeah. don't hit the ground running. Yeah. You, you were there for the, the birth of Wendy, if you like. It took him until. I mean, his first goal was against Brentford at home. Tim Closer from the long ball at Thomas Frank's first game. Down the middle. Brentford. Down the middle, yeah. That's his first goal. I think that was late October. Yeah. It's like, that took him. He signed for us in, well, following for January before, but let's say joined us in the June. It took him a long time to score his first goal, and from that point, he then set fire and all the rest of it. So, these guys take time. I always remember Bergkamp. Yeah. You know, he's similar age to me. When he came, first six months, this guy's rubbish. Gun Premier League great. It's like, well, yeah. that's one of the best players in the world who took his time to adapt. Um, so I think it's recruitment it's always judgy at the end which is super hard when you're live in the middle of it but what I'd say about the recruitment one is since Lee Duncan had recruitment which is after that summer Premier League window I would challenge people to go other than Martin Yoffalo maybe another thing like that so he did I'll go for him Sarah Nunez Aaron Ramsey that was what we signed that summer window the window window Martin so that's summer 22 is it after the Premier League season. Yes, so when Dean was manager, so that's yeah. summer 20. Yeah, summer yeah. 20. Yeah. So Lee Dunn became Henry Cumberland in the September 21. So he didn't do the summer Premier yeah. League. Yeah. Right. So since then, we signed no one in the January in that Premier League season. So then we did Sarah, New Year's Ramsey that summer under his, you know, his yeah. recruitment. Yeah. January, Marquinhos, yeah, I agree, didn't work out. Then last summer, Stacey, free transfer, Duffy, free transfer. Barnes free transfer, Kellen Fisher, cheap. Borgia Sykes free transfer, Fastnack. And people go, oh, that's not so great. Score seven goals. So there you go, that's a winger who's rubbish. Score seven goals. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Wendy ever scored seven goals in the season. No, we're not. Um, I'm not comparing to Wendy, by the way. But, but, um, who else did he sign? Uh, uh, blank. Yeah. Did great until the Indians. Um, so the point is, is like, I think, and then you go back to someone before and go, well, let's like, like, say, I think if uh, Sargent goes now, it's going to be over 20 million pounds. You know, he's going to pay for, for all of the others and, you know, clubs have to wait for him. Um, you know, the market was open. You know, Norwich City signed a player direct from South America. Six years ago, people laughed it would have been, what, we're not that club. It's like, we're now miles ahead of us. When I say we march a miles ahead in the markets, because of all of that work, you know, even emerging talent ones. If we look at, you know, Vicente Reyes, well, since Mariella's taken over that, Vicente Reyes, uh, Manu, who's obviously doing great down at um, Warsaw, uh, Warsaw, Keller Fisher would come in to that category. So it's like, you know, I think it's there's been more hits and misses, um, certainly since Lee became our, the head of recruitment. He's, he's, he's top class, but you're never going to get them right. It's fat. Especially when you're, I think if you're at any club, I think if you're at Chelsea, you know, you'd argue, is there to be field worth a quarter of a billion? Maybe not. Um, I think when you're not, it's, you know, last summer we spent two million pounds. That's fascinating. Everyone else was freeze. And it's like, Stoke's got over 20, for example. So if you're only spending that, you're going to get some wrong within that. Because um, of, of where we're at, but it's, um, if you look at the talent in the group, you know, it's the assets are big. You know, the big assets you then got, like, so Brad Hill doing great things on, on there as well. You know, it's like, it's a, you know, all the work we did, you know, I think 23 debuts now for the academy in the last six years. And um, yeah, so if you look at all that work, that's not from, that's good. We can't flip that. You can't flip the South American coming off. That's just hard work and then being brave enough to do it. Yeah. Which is probably where I came in. You know, so Lee and his guy did all the groundwork on the Gabby or on New Year's. Um, and the guy at the end has to sign off, I suppose, seeing it's like, but also Dean Smith needs to take some credit from that field, which is used our head coach, said it would have been easy to go, two lads from South America, stuff like it. Yeah. Someone else on loan, uh, Isaac Hayden, who signed the club, so, uh, but, um, but he backed it. So I know, come on, this is going to take the club forward, you know, we're going to be in selfless. Yeah. You know, and I think we've got a lot of staff, you know, Daniel at the start, you know, playing young players, selfless, so we never heard of Wendy, he was, 
crying his eyes out when we saw so Pritchard and I said, listen, we've got better ones. I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It's like, but he backed it and give him the chance, give Madison his chance. Yeah. God, he did so we could sell him as a club, you know, so, you know, and then Dean can be in and, you know, yes, I'm like, come on. I know as a club, this is part of our strategy. You've been working, I'm happy, come on, let, let's do it. Yeah. Um, you know, and then Dean, you know, he's the one who joined the road. Yeah. That's one as Gabby pushed him onto all the um, sites. You know, so I think it's a collective of everyone going, trying to protect the club and trying to help the club sort of grow. Yeah. Bringing it back around to you, you know, I mean, as you say, your focus now is what you've got ahead of you and this personal challenge, but the other side of it, uh, I think I saw, I, re- I heard an interview where you said almost like at your age now, when you, when you host Everest, that'll be almost the second part of your career. Yeah. I mean, does it have to be sporting director, technical director? I mean, how open-minded are you? I'm super open-minded, to be honest. I think all, what I do know is got to be with good people. I've got to work with good people, whether that's a club in the Champions League or whether that's a club in the National League. It's about people, with, whether it's in a different sport or a different industry. I've got to work with good people um, because I've been lucky at Huddersfield and Norwich to have that. Uh, but I think if I'm going to go back into football, it needs to be a club where if they're not in the Premier League already, if it's got to get there, I've got the resource to help stay there. Because I don't want to go through what I've been through twice here, which is first Premier League season comes together. We spent 750 grand on San Byron. Second Premier League season, we'd well, got relegated, we had to sell give, um, Godfrey and Lewis because of COVID. Then when we got reprogrammed, had to sell Windy to try and to the squad. That's so hard. And you get no thanks for it at the end. You know, when you get like Burnley are probably going to get relegated now. And they spent 100 million. And we get beaten up and good for the same as Right, like, I'd say, if you give me 100 million and give it back to sell the best way, which is one deal, let's say, I would say, well, let's say we say that. I think it's bloody hard for Premier League to do, you know, for that's how they just. But I'd say, well, we're really good, we're really giving a good shot. And I think, I know if I go back in the club, I've got to have them possibility where it could genuinely be a success at that level. Because if not, it's, just, it's horrible because you just fire, fire, hit. You get beaten up for it, and it's a bit like, what can we actually do? You know, it, it, you're working with your hands tied behind your back. And all, you know that, so that's why I never complained about it. It's like, these are the rules of Norwich, you know, and Ben will find that now. And, you know, probably it's probably going to have to sell a player. Because they're going to be in there since that. But that's the model, that's, you know, we've sold, since I was in eight players, we need to transfer record eight times of selling. It's like, that's, that's what we have to do. That's why you buy a Sarah, that's why you buy a Sergeant, that's why you get signed. That's why you promote academy players. Um, but it's hard. If you lose 20 goals out of your team yeah. and someone says, oh, you got a place somewhere and you've got a million and you've got two million and you've got nothing. And it's like, Jesus Christ, got, uh, that's hard. And it's super hard because you're constantly, it's like you're constantly being stupid. Um, through no back, that's the rules of the club. But then you can either accept it and go, oh, let's just be mediocre. But you don't want to be that. You want to be ambitious. You want to get to the Premier League, and you want to keep pushing. You want to keep growing. Um, but it, for me, it's been a club, and I hope that Norwich do this. Now, I think with Mark, that's a most year, I think he is super ambitious, and he's got the wealth to support. He's not stupid. Yeah. Just so I think Norwich can end up being that club as well. And I hope for them sake, if that's the case, but I think for my next challenge, as I've said to people, yeah, I've obviously been approached since I've left. And yeah. I'm like, I didn't leave. I chose to leave Norwich, not to go and do. This yeah. with a great respect, so like, I may as well say that Norris had done that. Where my family are, I was great owners, top fan base, top facilities, amazing staff. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, yeah, I've left that to come here, so I, I would, there's no point. So it's, yeah. it's got to be right. Um, yeah, you said there, I mean, obviously, there has, there has been approaches made to you even since, you know, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's been nice actually. I said to my wife, it must have been like I've been married for 20 years and you split up or whatever and you go dating again it's nice when someone rings and goes they want to have a date because like, oh, do you? you do sit there and go what if they all rings because that, that is the uncertainty bit of yeah. you know and I was talking to Steve Cooper about this because obviously he's our work now as well and he was the same of like I've worried what if they all ring you know and you do you sit there and go what, what if they all rings uh, so when they do it's, it's, it's nice but also someone gave me advice two days after they left around me and said don't take the first job take your time I was like, he goes, could you be tempted to take it? And he was right. Yeah. I was tempted to take it. And it wouldn't have been right. But I think just being loved again made me tempted before Christmas. And then it's like, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, pull back. Um, I mean, that's human nature. 